Father in heaven, we ask for the power of the Holy Spirit in the early and latter rain to come into this program. We have the power, we have the Holy Spirit's power. So Father, manifest yourself just exactly as you said you would. And we thank you for answering this prayer in Jesus name, amen. I wanna welcome everybody to our program. We wanna um, go right into the word of God. Um, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 16 the bible says and i saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet um great controversy 588 says that there will be a threefold union of spiritualism apostate protestantism and catholicism and we see it mentioned here in revelation chapter 16 and the bible and the spirit of prophecy says that under the influence of this threefold union this country will follow in the steps of rome and trampling upon the rise of conscience we know that this is happening the title of today's message is simply the unrolling of the scroll the scroll is being unrolled right now i want to let you know that every night um tonight is very important we've been doing a evangelistic crusade on the prophecies of revelation and we're just going right at it the three angels messages just as god told us to do and tonight, if you want to come on, um, tonight is 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, which is 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at 703-029-6702. That's 703-029-6702. We're going to be talking about the mark of the beast tonight, unveiling exactly what the mark of the beast is. And brothers and sisters, it is very important that we do this. The scroll is unrolling. And today we're just going to just give you the principles that are leading us to this. And for this reason, the Lord put upon my heart to do this um, meeting because of the fact that time is truly running short. Well, so we'll hopefully see you tonight with this seminar. And what's going on right now? Look at this right here. A march against the climate law on Sunday, tomorrow, March 28th at Lagarde. And this is from one of the countries. This is translated into English on the eve of the consideration of the climate bill. In the National Assembly, a rally is scheduled for Sunday, March 28, 2021. And it says here, we will mobilize together to denounce the lack of ambition of the climate law and the maneuvers that attempt to weaken it, demand a real law equal to the ecological emergency and defend the measures of the 150 members of the Citizens Convention on the weather. Weather, we're seeing a lot of things like this right here. We see this again, they're calling for a real climate law. I believe that it's going to be a Sunday law and brothers and sisters, it's time for us to be rooted in the spirit of prophecy and also, first of all, the Bible, brothers and sisters. We know what's getting ready to come down the pipeline. It is God, it is our responsibility to wake up because this thing is getting ready to happen. And as we do a state line seven day Adventist church every single Sabbath, we have a Sunday law update, updating you where we are in Bible prophecy because the, um, always remember, that when you know when your root is deep in christ there is no reason to fear the storm so brothers and sisters can we just be rooted and grounded in christ the bible says in the book of matthew chapter 7 that the person who was built their house upon a rock who built it up on a relationship with christ that when the wind blew and came it did not fall because it was founded upon a rock and that's what we need to keep our um life rooted in the sunday Mm -hmm. the Sunday law update. And we know that this, that this day of worship is gonna be a, the issue. How Sunday worship will be a deception and it will become the mark of the beast. And brothers and sisters, we understand that through the false day of rest established by the great whore, not by Jesus Christ, but the first day of the week, the venerable day of the sun, the commandment of man and the mark of the authority of the beast power and the false doctrine of Babylon the great will be offered as the solution as the panacea, excuse me, or as an inoculation to stop all these things going on right now. And brothers and sisters, we are, it's, it's going to come down to are we going to follow Babylon or are we going to be a part of the seven day Adventist church in the last days that's going to stand in these last days. It's going to go through a terrible ordeal. It's going to be a big shaking. And God is allowing things to, um, to unroll right now, because as we see right here, we see the actors involved and understand the mark of the beast is going to be definitely religious. But what happens is it's going to come in different shapes and different forms. And what's happening is, is we're seeing this right now to where in the country of Barbados, starting March 1st, supermarkets will open on Mondays to Saturdays, but they will close on Sundays. Why are they doing one day a week lockdowns? I mean, you're seeing this in Barbados. You see this in other parts of the world. And brothers and sisters, God is letting us know what's getting ready to go on. While the world leaders are pledging to do a great reset after the pandemic. That's interesting. 
It says, world leaders pledge a great reset, re great reset after the, the pandemic. I almost wanted to say pandemic, but this article just came out just recently. Last week, it says, Pope Francis calls for a new world order after the pandemic. So which one is it going to be? I believe it's going to be both because the Bible says that the whole world will wander after the beast. So we're seeing this come to pass right before our very eyes and we just need to be awake we need to be woke as they say notice this right here what are what is pope francis and the vatican doing to fight climate change why do we keep seeing all these articles right here but notice this right here and what lets me know that we're at the end of time um look what's going on with the catholic president it says before the second ever catholic president even set foot in the white house he gave pope francis his word promising that he would work with the leader of the global church, talking about the Catholic church, to address the crisis of climate change. Mm, mm, mm. So him and the Pope are working together, the US and the beast power, the second, the first beast power. This here lets me know, brothers and sisters, that we cannot um, ignore this. On the first day in office, the president made good on his promise, signing an executive order for the US to rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement, renewing a commitment that his predecessor had reneged on. Pope Francis has devoted much of his papacy to teaching about the care for the planet and the raising of the priority of the global change, climate change on the world agenda. And Mr. Biden has consistently affirmed the Pope's vision for climate justice. He got him right in his hand. And this is this article is written by a Jesuit priest, brothers and sisters. Mm, mm, mm. Biden says, my faith teaches me that we should be a nation, not only that accepts the truth of the climate crisis, but leads the world in addressing it. It says the Biden administration will find a willing partner in the fight against climate change in Rome. So we see all the ducks are in place. It's just a matter of God allowing it to happen. It says Biden and Pope Francis could make a climate change miracle. I don't wanna know what that miracle is. We know it's gonna be false miracles to deceive people into going along with it. And that's why it's time for us to get out of the city and move into the country. This is the easement. This is the entrance to our country property in Tennessee. As you see here, this is our country home on the top of the hill. And brothers and sisters, I am so thankful that we were able to get out of the city. Now, are, am I saved because I moved out of the country? No, I'm saved because of the blood of Jesus. But what happens is we're to follow the lamb, whithersoever he leads us. And he is leading us out of these cities because we know that a Sunday law is getting ready to come. And where church and state is gonna come in so many ways, it's gonna lead in this deception. That's why the spirit of prophecy says we must take a firm stand. We will not reverence the first day of the week as the Sabbath, for it is not the day that was blessed and sanctified by Jehovah. And in reverencing Sunday, we should place ourselves on the side of the great deceiver. So we gotta place ourselves on the right side of truth in these last days, because while um, we see this going on, the Pope is calling for world solidarity. And even in the article talking about a new world order, he talked about solidarity, everybody coming together, just as the Bible said um, it would happen. So what happens is this right here, um, the Lord is showing us that this thing is getting ready to come. This takes us to the message for today. Well, we're, we're in the message right now. Um, it says the light that we have upon the third angel's message is the true light. The mark of the beast is exactly what it has been proclaimed to be. So Sunday worship enforced by Sunday law is exactly what it's been proclaimed to be, the mark of the beast. Then she says, all in regard to this matter is not yet understood. Can you believe that? And it says, and it will not be understood until the unrolling of the scroll. So all we have to do is just continue to watch the signs of the times and watch the things unfold. And the things are unfolding before us right now. That's the reason why we're not conspiracy theorists. You know, myself, other ministers, and sad to say, uh, you know, how many, you know, and, and I get into that right here, but what happens is this right here, very few voices are really calling attention to this. And sad to say, you got seven day Adventists drowning out the truth by, by casting this as conspiracy theory preaching. But it's nothing conspiratorial when the Pope is talking about coming together, when the Pope is talking about a new world order, when the Pope is talking about the very things we're seeing going on. Sister White says, let the watchmen now lift up their voice and give the message which is present truth for this time. Let us show the people where we are in prophecy. So we are commanded by God to tell the people where we are. And so what happens is we have to expose the man of sin. And my concern about Joe Biden being president is based on prophecy. Look at this right now, I'm not a Republican, but listen what Spirit of Prophecy says. Great Controversy 580, all these Adventists that voted for the, for the president, if they voted for him for whatever reason, that's, that's between them and God. 
And what happens is I don't take no political par positional parties, but I take a prophetic position. The spirit of prophecy says the Roman Catholic Church with all its ramifications throughout the whole world forms one vast organization under the control and designed to serve the interests of the papal see. that they're, de they're designed to serve the interests of the Vatican. It's millions of communicants on every country on the globe are instructed to hold themselves as bound in allegiance to the Pope. Biden knows that. Whatever their nationality or their government, they are to regard the authority of the church as above all other. Though they may take their oath pledge and their loyalty to the state, yet the back of this lies the vow of obedience to Rome, absolving them from every pledge inimical to her interest. Brothers and sisters, there it is right there. We're not saying that I don't, I can't say for sure that something long is going to happen under the Biden administration, but everything is in place for it to happen. See, what's going on is, is that this issue with climate change is found right here in the great controversy. The Bible says the waves and the seas roaring with perplexity and accidents and calamities by sea and by land and great conflagrations and fierce tornadoes and terrific hailstorms and tempests and floods and cyclones and in tidal waves and in earthquakes and in every place and in a thousand forms, the spirit of prophecy says that Satan is exercising his power. He sweeps away the ripening harvest and famine and distress follow. He imparts to the air a deadly taint and thousands perish by the pestilence. So this pestilence of COVID-19 brothers and sisters, I believe is prophetic. Then she says it's gonna get more and more frequent and disastrous. They, they still talk about a new strand and they're searching in vain. The, you know, the, everything they're trying to do has not worked, but this is what, this is gonna be the last resort, I believe. It will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath and that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced. You see that? So what happens is this right here. Sooner or later, they're going to talk about the need to keep Sunday. And we're seeing it all over. And this is the reason why we have to expose this. And you know, spiritualism is going to come into playing. And look at this article right here. Talking about the Virgin Mary prophesied. Um, foretold the COVID-19 pandemic. And if she foretold it, then she got to have the solution. Listen to my son, Jesus. And you know, that's not the Virgin Mary, that's the devil coming as Mary because the Bible says the dead don't know anything. So we understand that everything's coming brothers and sisters. And we're going to see that this is gonna be a battle between man's law and God's law. The Sabbath is the sign of his God sanctifying power in our lives. And all we gotta do is connect ourselves with the lovely Jesus and on a daily basis, receive that righteousness by faith and reject the man of sin. Monthly lockdown Sunday. What's going on, brothers and sisters? What we're seeing going on is we're seeing the formation of the image, brothers and sisters, to where, just like this image was not built overnight, so the formation towards the image of the beast is not being formed, is being formed, it's not being formed overnight, but it's brick by brick, foot by foot, ounce by ounce, we're seeing a progression towards it and where we're gonna be tested, not just on the big things, but on the little things. And in preparation to this, as God is unrolling the scroll, the articles I'm showing you, it's just proving that the scroll is unrolling. God is showing you point by point, get ready, get ready, get ready for I'm coming. Because we know who the major players are, the United States of America and the, the, the Catholic Church of Revelation to where we'll be offered to receive the mark of the beast and to reject the seal of God. But Jesus is offering you the seal of God and to reject the mark of the beast. Testimonies uh, volume five says in page 216 that those who, who are uniting with the world are receiving the worldly mode now preparing for the mark of the beast. There are people within the Adventist system right now who are preparing for the mark of the beast and don't even know it. That's why we gotta give the straight testimony in order to prepare people to stand firm to God during this investigative judgment hour time, because it's gonna to get to the point where Elomite says that the mark of the beast will be presented in some shape to every institution and to every individual. This is coming brothers and sisters, and we need to be ready for this. This is the reason why with all these smart gadgets out here, why be surprised that they come out with something like this to where they'll start talk, tracking where you are on Sundays. This thing is getting ready to come down the pipeline but what happens is we need the Holy Ghost power. We need the Holy Spirit to give us grace. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you a video. I'm not gonna go to get into a video right now, but what happens is this right here in Jamaica and in other places, India and other places of the world, 
They're going to biometric system, digital, um, digital currencies right now. And we're seeing this. And Sister White says it's going to be an overwhelming surprise. I almost want to say the overwhelming surprise happened last year with all this stuff, but maybe there's another one that's coming. But nevertheless, um, what the theme of what we're showing you is to show you how quickly everything can happen. Everything can happen very quickly and things are happening quickly. This is why we need a double dose of the Holy Ghost in the early and latter rain. We're to pray for it. We're to receive it by faith and go forward by faith. Education, let me see my education. Uh, Mark chapter 11 says that whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you've already received it and you shall have them. And we're to thank God that we've already received it even though we don't realize it yet. But Sister White says that the gift which we already possess will be realized when we need it the most. So we need the latter rain right now. But those of us have been praying daily for the Holy Spirit and going forth under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, God is filling you. Just like God is filling my battery, my uh, cell phone up with electricity. I don't have to feel the electricity to know that something's not, that something is happening. But we must surrender day by day, hour by hour, moment by moment to the control of the Lordship of Christ. And with this spirit, we receive the former rain and the latter rain. And understand this former and latter rain isn't two Holy Spirits. It's one Holy Spirit. It's the measure of the Holy Spirit we receive at the beginning all the way to the end of our spiritual growth, whereby God can seal us with that seal and we'll be able to stand against the beast power. Ellen White says that Christ has promised that the Holy Spirit should abide with those who are wrestling for victory over sin. We need to be wrestling. Now unto him, the Bible says, that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. Come on now. So we have to pray for victory over sin, victory over every defect of our character to where God will lift these things and remove these things from our characters to where it's not a part of us anymore. It says to demonstrate the power of divine might by endowing the human agent with supernatural strength. We receive divinity through the power of the Holy Spirit and his divinity is divine and it's powerful to where we can live a life without sinning. That's why she says those only who through faith in Christ obey all the commandments of God will reach the condition of sinlessness in which Adam lived before his transgression. So that's power. They testify to their love of Christ by obeying all of his precepts. And so what happens is while we need to be preparing, understand that the world's preparing for your destruction. That's why the Pope is gaining such ground. He's an old man. So therefore he doesn't have much time. So what we need to do brothers and sisters is prepare because one day we're gonna be commanded to worship this being whom the world will claim as the savior of the world, as the 2020 agenda is seeking to bring about peace and security. It says it right there in the United Nations website, peace and security by the year 2020. The Bible says that all the nations are gonna buy into it. And the Bible says that all nations shall drink of the wine of the wrath of birth fornication. So what we're telling you today is don't drink popade. Brothers and sisters, this is very important, very salvific because the whole world is gonna be involved. And right now, the world's being divided right now into geographical kingdoms. They're called unions, the African Union, South American Union, um, European Union. I believe it's going to be 10 before it's all over. 10 literally or 10 in principle. Notice what the Bible says. The Bible says in the 10 horns which thou sawest, listen to this right here, um, are 10 kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings for one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength into the beast. And I'm con convinced this climate change issue and this um, COVID-19 issue is the issue that is really uh, uh, instigating this. Look at this right here. Now, this is um, in India. It says here, uh, this is, uh, this came out just 12 hours ago. Uh, Maidha Pradesh extends Sunday lockdowns to five more districts. It says here that they're doing a lockdown it says the government's decided to impose Sunday lockdown in five more districts as COVID-19 cases surge. So they're doing this to stop COVID-19, a virus that's around seven days a week. They're doing Sunday lockdowns um, in order to get this down. Now in Barbados, they did one, but now guess what brothers and sisters, do you know that Jamaica right now is doing a weekend lockdown in Jamaica? So what happens is look at the gleaner. This came out just 10 hours ago. 
I mean, we're seeing this stuff unfolding. We're seeing the storm, the, the scroll unroll. And I believe God is allowing this to happen in other countries to show what's going to happen in America. This is the Jamaican gleaner. And anybody that's a Jamaican, um, this thing's not even coming up. But what happens is, um, look what it says here, storm. Oh, my. It said, okay, anyway, people are swapping stores because of this issue in Jamaica. Just go, go on Google and just type up um, weekend lockdown in Jamaica. We all know about it. And then guess what's going on tomorrow? Do you know that tomorrow on Sunday that, um, I'll, I'll be there. Yeah, I, that, that tomorrow in Jamaica, that Sunday, this was ordered by the prime minister that, that, that Sunday will be a no movement day to where you don't make no movements tomorrow on Sunday, brothers and sisters. You know, all I'm telling you is, is this right here. The Lord is showing us that this thing is coming. The Lord is showing us that we need to be awake. We need to be woke. And so the world is looking for a solution. And that solution they're going to come up with is the religious observance of Sunday, brothers and sisters. And the whole world is going to give their power <coughs> and their strength into the beast. That's why Ellen White says that the agencies of evil are combining their forces and are consolidating it. They're strengthening for the last great crisis. Then she says, great changes shall soon take place in our world. They're taking place right now, brothers and sisters. And the final movements will be rapid ones. We're seeing it going on. You know, articles, I mean, we've seen these before. I've shown this to you before. We talked about this before, where it says here, the United States must repent of the sin of fossil fuels. Then it says how world leaders must listen to the Pope on climate change. Brothers and sisters, if they're saying this then, what are they saying now? I have an article where the Pope is looked upon by the majority of Americans as more than a, a religious figure, but as a political figure that should be trusted. And all this is doing is leading people to accept him as the solution to all these world ills. Brothers and sisters, I'm here to let you know, not only, do, are, not only are they doing it because of what's going on in, um, climate they're doing it because of the rejection of god as well too you know what's going to lead to the image of the beast spirit of prophecy says that sunday observance will be enforced to um control the morals of society and now with a democratic congress guess what's going on now all this is coming back again to where gender confusion is coming back and it's just getting bad now to where this was a joke a couple of years ago but this is real now to where pe where people tr people are denying genders now According to the Bible, God made everything good. And now they're saying it's more than one gender. This is confusion, brothers and sisters. And what's going on is worldliness. It's coming on and men are dressing like women and we have confusion. The holy and the sacred is coming together. Worldliness and godliness, a double-minded man is unstable in all their ways. And we see this going on to where even Kirk Franklin himself had to be rebuked by a first day person because he was being worldly. And regardless, it's, it's what it is, worldliness, the seduction, everything's getting feminized. Everything's getting, I wanna say gay, gay, gay. It's getting effeminate and brothers and sisters, it's getting so bad, even in the church of the living God, you got gay pastors. This is some church of Christ church in Illinois, a gay pastor with his so-called illegitimate spouse because that is not his spouse that's a man that's god that's an abomination to god let me tell you this right here and we need to be careful let me tell you this government making sin legal does not make it right and we need to understand that all these things that while the scroll is unrolling satan is trying to destroy adventism from within so we'll have no spiritual immunity to when it happens brothers and sisters let me tell you this right here man um, this thing with the legalization of gay marriage and this Equality Act that's coming. Thank God the church raised their voice about it. Thank God. But what happens is this is going to affect this Equality Act that's coming. It's, it's the king of the south, y'all. So the king of the north is getting ready to come back. This is going to affect how our church will conduct their churches, hospitals, and schools. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters. And churches could be forced to accept gay pastors based on equality and gender if they allow this, if this thing gets passed. And the question is, is this possible? Yes, because in the church, because ordination without regard to gender opens the door. See, the Bible said that the bishop was supposed to be the husband of one wife, which would eliminate uh, a woman 
because she's not supposed to be the head in the church. But it also eliminates gay marriage, husband and one wife. So husband and wife, that's two genders. So that tells me right there that if a husband's to be married, they to be married to somebody of another gender. You understand this right here? But a same gender pastor would definitely disqualify him. God is always wise. God is always correct. God always gets it right. All we got to do is just stand on the word and teach it. But what's going on in a, even in our hospitals? And um, look at this right here. Florida Adventist Hospital offers some health benefits to same-sex couples. When you don't follow the blueprint for medical missionary work, then you get into trouble with the government. Propelled by the legalization of gay marriage in Florida, the health Adventist system voted to offer benefits to same-sex couples employed at Florida Hospital. The company already offers similar benefits to its employees in the District of Columbia, somewhere called Washington, D.C., somewhere not too far from this church. Illinois, Wisconsin, and Maryland. Brothers and sisters, this is apostasy. There needs to be a protest to this. This needs to stop. And what's happening is this is preparing Adventists to accept the mark of the beast. So what is our duty? What is our job? Understand what's going on. The morals are decreasing. The calamities, as well as the national deficit, they just keep giving us this stimulus money. It's just increasing the debt. And the temporal prosperity is going down, down, down. And what do we have right now? We got a thing called national chaos in the United States. We don't know what to do and stuff like that. We thought things were getting better, but it's just getting worse, brothers and sisters. And guess what's going on? Satan's offering the solution. The solution's gonna be, notice this, a mandatory return back to God in the form of a national Sunday law. Brothers and sisters, it's coming. It's coming. Satan has manipulated this thing. That's the reason why we need the latter rain. We need the latter rain of the Holy Spirit. We need this power like never before. We need the, uh, the power of God. And listen to this right here. Second Selected Messages, page 380. We are to be ready and waiting for the orders of God. Nations will be stirred to their very center. Support will be withdrawn from those who proclaim God's only standard of righteousness. Our days of religious liberty are numbered. The only sure test of the character and all who will not bow to the decree of the national councils and obey the national laws to exalt the, the Sabbath instituted by the man of sin to the disregard of God's holy day will feel not only the oppressive power of popery alone, but of the Protestant world, the image of the beast. Everything is being set up. That's why she said Satan will work his miracles to deceive. He will set up his power as supreme. We're about to come into this time. The church, the seven day of the church may appear as about to fall. That means it doesn't become Babylon, but it does not fall. It may appear like it's going to fall, but it does not fall. It remains while the sinners in Zion will be sifted out. All the tears, all the apostasy, all this stuff's going to leave at the Sunday law. This chaff separated from the precious wheat. This is a terrible ordeal, but nevertheless, it must take place. None but those who have been overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony will be found with the loyal, listen to this here, and true, without the spot and stain of sin. That's the righteousness of Christ's message. Without guile in their mouths, we must be divested of our self-righteousness and arrayed in the righteousness of Christ. And as I bring this to a close, what do we need? We need Jesus. We need Jesus. We need the experience of Jesus to where daily he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we can receive that daily baptism every day so that we can be shielded from the, from the power of Satan through the righteousness and the power of Jesus. Will you give your life to Jesus today? Because we can keep showing article after article after article. And there's even more articles. This, just the, this week, this Mississippi um, senator talking about we shouldn't vote on Sunday because it violates the fourth commandment. She don't know what the Bible says. And one article said that if she's gonna say that, is she now ready to say we must enforce Sunday laws? Brothers and sisters, this thing is getting ready to happen and seven day Adventists are asleep. And my appeal to you, brothers and sisters, as we bring this to a close, is to repent. That means we gotta let go of all sin. It's to let go and cut off, knock out our eye, not, not cut off our hand and pluck out our eye, whatever it takes through the righteousness and the blood and the love of God to escape all these things that shall come to pass and shall stand before the son of man. This is our duty, brothers and sisters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my exit. But tonight at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard, we're going to come back. And if you want to come out and bring somebody, not just yourself, 
because it's easy to do all these meetings for our people, but how many of us are reaching out to those for real, real? Handing a book is good. Handing tracks is good, but we need to do some crusades to bring and educate and teach the public what's getting ready to come down. We're averaging 500 people tonight. We need a million people tonight here on Zoom so they can come and hear this present truth, brothers and sisters, and bring somebody who doesn't know the truth and anybody in the Washington, D.C. area, Maryland, Virginia, that comes to this church or wants Bible studies, we will send them to light bearers, brothers and sisters. I promise you that. And so brothers and sisters, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Let's pray for the latter rain. Let's finish this work and let's just get up out of here. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I ask that you will seal us with the Holy Spirit. I pray for this church, guide this church in all matters of growth and development and prepare us for what is soon to come upon this earth as an overwhelming surprise. Thank you, Lord, for answering this prayer in Jesus name, amen. I love you very much. I'm at state line, I have to preach another sermon. But that's okay, brothers and sisters, because we're gonna win. Why? Because Jesus has already won the battle. Let's place ourselves on the winning side. May God bless you.